40 Valkyries gonna start to make their way forward. Klaus is going to risk this war with a pure Valkyrie army and cross this entire base and end on the town hall. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to week four of the Fire Clash League. We have Navi taking on EXG Alpha. And unfortunately, I was in New York City all day today. And I just got back. But conveniently, I got some friends who are able to record this war and send me the footage. And I haven't seen any of it yet. But I did get a little bit of a spoiler that Klaus did something wild. And you probably saw it in the thumbnail. I don't know what it is yet. We're going to find out in just a minute here after we get to his attack. But I heard... Navi did some crazy things, and this underdog team over in EXG Alpha put up a pretty good fight. So let's see how they do today as we kick off week four. And also, let's also remind everybody that Navi has gone perfect after perfect after perfect in the first three weeks of the Fire Clash League. And that means that Navi is potentially going for their fourth perfect war. And that is even counting all the other perfect wars that they got in the other leagues that they're playing in. So Navi's on fire right now. They're looking very, very good. But I'd like to set up here from Zanki, able to go in ahead and get that Eagle Artillery down with the two E-Tracks on the right side. We got Flamefinger at the very bottom, the King and the Queen. Unfortunately, the King's going inside the base there. Would have been better if he stayed to the outside and made sure that he didn't pull the Clan Castle. But he's going to go all the way up in there, and he'll assist with the Town Hall takedown. So at least he's got that under control there. But unfortunately, he just lost his Warden. Warden got shot down. I didn't even see what hit him. But if you lose your Warden, then you're losing whatever equipment that he had running there. But the Giant Gauntlet King was able to secure the Town Hall takedown. E Tracks with no extra support with the Warden. Just the work of the Queen there working. And the Flame Flicker does end up going down to the Expo. Ah, maybe not the best structured attack here overall. Unfortunately for Zanki, this one is quickly falling apart. So let's pass it over to Navi. And let's see what they got for their open attack. Looking at the Navi roster right below me here, we can see that Dima and Picastro play. That means no Kazuma. I guess we'll see what Picastor can do here to start us off, though, as he dives in with a Root Rider attack. A boulder bounce into the very bottom of the base there. Going to go ahead and cut a funnel. Funnel form to the other side there. And I guess we'll see what he can do here. Remember, this is his account that he gemmed all of his equipment at max. We talked about it in the previous videos. We saw that he had a level 27 giant gauntlet there and level 18 equipment for almost everything else there. Although, I think he had like a level 14 healing tone, but he might have leveled up there since then but looks like he's doing something over the right side here looks like a couple of balloons to dive it in as he gets the queen charge to go start us off here didn't quite get all the way to the scatter shot there with those balloons but it did get the defensive road champion down baby dragon up at the top they're gonna go ahead and follow the queen in the scatter shot and into the multi inferno and she can reach that scatter shot over the wall there so that works out oh absolutely perfectly she can get one of the expos but the other one is gonna sustain damage on her but with the funnel form down south he dives that king in there with the phoenix and remember level 27 giant gauntlet and the level 18 rage gem i also noticed that p castor has been running the healer puppets a lot there on his queen so we'll see when he pops that ability if he actually has that on this one here but in the meantime he does have the healing tome and the eternal tome onto the room right that's what we've been seeing out of him a lot and he's been liking that healing tome even though he didn't max it out there he maxed out the rage gem, but he didn't max out the healing tome but down south there the king is able to clear out the rest of that compartment there except for the ricochet cannon working on it right now under phoenix looks like he doesn't quite get it down but he does have one spare room rider that drops to the very bottom of the base there queen still making her way towards the top there and he did actually use the eternal tome to protect the blimp that was able to go and secure the town hall takedown so now the queen and the Rubart is don't have to handle that. There's that Queen ability. Spawns the Healer Puppet. And he will have three extra healers there on top of all the healers that he already had here. And his world champion still moving nice and smooth. There pops her ability. All defenses are going down here. He's got plenty of force. And that means that Navi is going to be starting off this match with the lead. And guys, that was really fast as well. With a bit of swag on top of that. He's got an extra invisibility and an extra freeze. That was very, very smooth right there for Picastro. And that means that Navi will start off with the lead. 
With the way the Navi's been playing right now, you definitely do not want to start a war trailing. But unfortunately for EXG Alpha, that's the way it's played out. So they need to find a big defense. They need to get a big hold. And they also need to get some triples on the board here to give themselves an opportunity if one presents itself. But they're going to have to break Navi's offensive streak here. And that's not an easy task right here because Navi has been playing extremely well right now. And I guess we'll see what happens here with Electric Titans and Super Bowlers. We don't see a Rage Gem on the board there. And I did talk about the Rage Gem with Bowler attacks there in previous videos. I think that the Rage Gem is not good with Bowlers. I think either Healing Tome and uh, I guess um, Healing Tome and Eternal Tome or Eternal Tome with the Life Gem is also a good option. But it looks like we got Earthquake Boots. We have the Healer Puppet and we had the Healing Tome onto the board there. So we'll see how that does. But I like that equipment lineup here. I do tend to prefer when we see the giant gauntlet. I'm not a big fan of the earthquake booster, but I've been seeing a handful of people break him out there, and I guess they can do some good damage there, and they can open the walls as well, but we're gonna get some walls open by the log launcher in from the right side of the base there as it goes in and forms the funnel, but it does pop open relatively quick, and it does get the funnel formed there, so he can now charge the boulders into the core of the base here. Now, this is where the healing tome and the eternal tome are gonna come into play here, but if we get the town hall down early, That'd be good. We got Ice Golems that came out of the defense of CC. Town Hall does go down before he switches over the Ice Golems. And now that will just kind of anchor him down for a bit there on the Healing Tome and the Eternal Tome. Just need to keep him alive for long enough that he can go out of that, get the healers under rage, and then march the bowlers forward. And everything seems to be going smooth right now for him. He's got the king that was up at the top there. He popped that uh that Earthquake boost there. I was able to get out in front of the world champion just a little bit there, but the world champion is going to continue into the ricochet cannon. She gets a stun on it. That's a big deal. We got the bullets to stay to the core there. Queen broke off to the south there and is doing some good work along the bottom edge, but the world champion is able to get into that multi archer tower. She goes down and she'll pass that diggy over. And I guess either the warden or the queen can direct it from here. But guys, it's looking very, very good at this one. Looks like. So June is going to get the triple for EXG Alpha. And now we'll pass it back to Navi and we'll see if they can find that elusive defense because right now Navi's on a hot streak. Looks like Navi's sending in Dima next. He's stepping into the roster in Kazuma's spot today. Now he is primarily on Navi's base building team, but he definitely can break out a good attack there. And unfortunately, last time we saw him step into the roster, he had a big miss and Navi almost lost that war when he ended up with a very low percentage two star. So I guess for EXG Alpha's sake, they'll be hoping that he makes that mistake again. But we'll see what happens here as he dives in with a couple of Super Barbarians and six Root Riders to pair with his Queen Walk that he's starting off with. And I think that uh, Navi's base building team is very, very strong right now. They have Dima. He used to play for Badzinger. He was also the base builder for Badzinger. They also picked up Satan's Curse, who was the primary base builder for Class Champs when they went out there and won the World Championship last year. And they also have their team manager and also alternate the dumps in every once in a while. And who is another option there and also just a fantastic base builder. So Navi's base building team and their roster is stacked right now. But let's see what Demon can do here as he makes his way forward there. Queen was able to just map her way right in there. Get the expo down. Got a scatter shot down and is turning over to the other scatter shot expo now. And it looks like he got that wall break here to go all the way in. Very nice wall break right there. And it looks like he'll just go ahead and use a freeze instead of rage right there. And the eagle artillery is not activated yet. So he's not taking any extra damage, but it will activate now. He's got a rage gem onto his warden. And we've got queen basic equipment, giant gun of the king, level 14 rage gem, and max eternal tome as he dives that blimp across the base there to go secure the dawn takedown. We typically are going to want to rage for that as well. We could use rages on the queen, but we want to save one to make sure that that blimp is able to go ahead and take the tunnel down. And with that monolith right next to it, he should be able to throw Yeti Bites backwards, and they do. They go backwards, and they take the monolith down, and they distracted it in the meantime. And on top of all that, the Root Riders have opened up the base. They meet up with the queen. Giant Gauntlet going off on the right side there with the king. He'll funnel the outside of the base. They're taking out a couple buildings, and the Road Champion working right next to him with the Spirit Fox. He just needs to get past that defense. The king over the left side, he's looking very, very. 
very strong. I don't see any mistakes on this one. He's got super barbs now going in to support the backside of the base there, get the cleanup moving, and also provide some pa some cross tanking, but also get the root rider still tanking there as well. So on all fronts, he's got it under control. Demon gets it done. Navi's got two on the board, and they will sustain their lead. And now returning fire, Viva Max Dream diving in with what looks like a super archer bomb into super barbarians most people have been putting away the super archers with the super barbarians and opting to run instead super archers with root riders but he's gonna go back to a classic here from town Hall 15 and we'll see what we can do with it as he drops in on top of the monolith right there good punch in the base right there investing the warden into it warden was running the rage gem there which can definitely boost the balloons that go in but it's nice if we can actually get a couple of villains down there i mean you can get a couple of heavy strikes there with the blues, but this warden refuses to die. He got the town hall down. Oh my goodness, that's some good value right there, but he really, really wants to model it down, and it drops right there as he attacks other buildings in the area. He got one of the Expos over the right side, and he's going after another one. All the Expos going down. Warden was able to clear everything at the very bottom of the base there, and that, my friends, was some very, very good Super Archer value. Now, he has to march his heroes across the base there. No war to support, but looks like the Battle Builder is going to repair all of the buildings that took damage in the area. But that's fine. I think he got enough value. He should be okay here. But the Queen will go right behind that King there. Super Barbarians go around the outside of the base. He has a Titan right there that can definitely clear any ground skill. He's up to World Champions starting in nice and early here. Hopefully, she stays with the group there. We've got ground skellies. Give a little bit of distraction for her. Hopefully, she doesn't split off to the right. We don't want her separating from everybody else there. But she is. She's going to the right there. Maybe that's okay, though. Honestly, that right side is very, very thinned out. And the Dicky should be able to take stuns. And he could just collapse into Super Barbarians and provide some extra HP and extend her life pool. But up to the top side of the base there, King, who, by the way... All the heroes here have a hero potion and a power potion to try to boost them up here. There we go. Level 17 giant gauntlet. We got a level 17 rage gem that was used on the ward as well. I'm not sure if he's got his equipment that high. Why he needs to pop a power potion. Maybe he had one or two troops there that needed a little bit of an extra punch there. But he's got a complete under control there. He's got a swag queen ability and a swag road champion ability. Very, very nicely done. And now we pass it back to Navi and we see if EXG Alpha can find the defense they need. Navi's team captain going next here. Looks like it's going to be Root Riders with a Queen Charge and some Super Barbarians for Gaku. So King just going in at the Defensive Queen. Get the Defensive Queen to lock onto him. So he surges forward and he will pop his giant gauntlet and get in there and take her out. And also, notice how he waited for the Queen to actually sustain some damage there before he deployed her healers. Because we don't want those healers going over to the King. We don't want them running out there and trying to keep that King alive and... Maybe then having the healers get dragged into danger. That's always a death sentence for an attack like this. But the queen needs to get to this town hall takedown. She's going to round around the bottom here. So he needs to like cut off her path and force her back in. I'm not sure exactly what you do here. This always makes me nervous when I see people make this approach like this. But he does get a headhunter down for the defensive king. He's got ice golems working behind him. But he locks out the defensive king first. And he's able to get him down there before switching over the ice golems. So he should be able to sustain. But he's got some super barbs going to the very bottom. Bottom here. Maybe we can cut out the path in there. Do we run the root riders into the bottom? Or do we put it at the top there? Queen goes to ability. He's got a jump spell. The jump spell will push the queen towards the town hall. And I think she goes in. He's got her stuck in the tornado trap right now. But she is looking to gun down that town hall right there. But her healers are not at the optimal angle. So he does have to go in and make them invisible. But under a rage. He's able to take it down there within that four and a half seconds. And here we go. Root Rod is in the very top of the base there. We do have a Rage Gem on the ward. And we got Skeleton Spells to go ahead and tank the Monolith up at the top of the base there. And overall looking pretty strong here. He's got to keep the Queen alive though to really have the best chance. And right now she's a bit vulnerable. He's got two Freezes left on standby. I think we got to save those for the Scatter Shot and the Defensive Road Champion. But he burns one of them out of the Rage Tower and the Multi Inferno. Queen barely, barely sustaining right now, but the ward ability is topping everybody off right there, and I guess he'll get all the extra damage output out of his road champion, and maybe eventually that queen, if she gets us out of the rage there, or does put her in the rage right there, and now she's walking away. Okay, that's fine. I think he's got it out of control. He's got a lot of HP still with the root riders. He's even got Valkyries. The Valkyries probably came out of the battle drill. 
And they just kind of join in the fight there. Get some extra damage output. He's got plenty of time. He's got plenty of force there. Pops out his ability. And the base goes down in a hurry. But there we go. Navi's got three of the board. They are sustaining their lead. I gotta hand it to the underdog team here. That first attack was a bit shaky. But the rest of them have been very good. So they're giving themselves a chance. As now, Drake Scott. But he's diving in with, it looks like, a... Super Archer Bomb into Root Riders with Super Barbarians. This is what I'm talking about. If we want to break out the Super Archers, the Root Rider and Super Barbarian mix is one of the best ways to do it. Especially if we can deliver the blimp, secure the talent takedown, and not have to invest our warden into it. He's able to get all of the value in the area there. Go to the scatter shot next there. He is able to take the scatter shot. Got the ice golem taken out there without getting frozen up himself. And he'll start to work on the defensive world champion, but he does end up dying out right there. So I would say pretty sufficient value. He got the clan castle partially pulled or fully pulled there. I didn't see if he got a full pull or not, but here we go. We have the Rage Gem going to boost the Root Riders here. I've seen this being done with either the Rage Gem or with the Healing Tome. I think both of them are pretty sufficient options there. I still see most people breaking out the Eternal Tome, though, and not really running Rage Gem and Healing Tome together. I thought that they would actually be used together a lot, but I think most people are still opting to use the Eternal Tome on almost every single attack. I very rarely see anybody else attempting anything other than the Eternal Tome with either the Rage Gem or the Healing Tome, or I guess in Alalo, the Life Gem, right? But he does push through the core there. There's the Warded ability. Able to make everybody invincible. That gets him through the defensive world champion. We do have healer puppets spotted again to the queen. And of course, we have the giant gauntlet on the king. Giant gauntlet and the rage gem. Such a powerful combination. But look at these root riders. Just open up the base. They actually could ultimately not open up the walls there if they move too quick. So go with the rage gem. Actually make sure so they don't get a speed increase and they don't actually over shoot the walls there and then have not taken down by just moving too past over them because they just like tick damage onto the walls when they stand on top of them so you actually want them to move a little bit slower but with the rage gem not boosting their speed they're able to get the best of both worlds right there where they move slow enough there to get the walls open for the heroes and then they also give you the big damage increase as well but with a king ability and a queen ability more super barbarians in the back side of the base here and we're approaching the end but guys they're giving themselves a chance. They had the opening miss, but they've had only triples from there. And now they have to stop either Klaus or Stars. I guess we're saving Klaus for last. Let's get into Stars here and see if he can sustain the lead for his team. It is going to be a zap into Lalo here. He's been using the stack a lot. Looks like he goes ahead and uses the light to take out Expo, Multi Arch Tower, and Inferno right there. And he also tested for traps before he dropped into the play. He just dropped in a couple troops there before he did the lightning. And now a couple additional troops to go in for distraction. Just make sure that we don't have a Tesla farm popping up on that Flame Flinger. Because with the Town Hall activated by the Earthquake, he can now get the Flame Flinger to lock onto it. But he just needed to make sure that he was dropping into a safe spot right there. And he had to make sure he did not take any Mortar Strikes as well. So very, very nicely executed. But that's what we've been seeing out of Stars lately. He's been playing on a completely different level than almost anybody that I've seen. I think I saw but the Navi players were able to run their clan war league and they were able to get number one in the world in the clan war league and most of the players went perfect seven out of seven i think stars went perfect on every single one of his accounts there so very very impressive stuff there but the king running the giant gauntlet queen running basic command warden running basic command of course in a lalo we want to make sure we run the life gem the life gem is critical to making the stack work because it gives a huge benefit for blue because they are medium HP troops and of course because they're air troops they're the only medium HP air troop and they can't take advantage of an apprentice warden so they still need the life gem and so we can't swap out to the other alternate equipment but still running the turtle tome very very important we do have the clan castle being pulled to the right there king to try to get that under control here very nicely placed poison right there have a couple of cover the super minions and cover the headhunters right there and the king will just sit under phoenix and take those out and keep the flame figure safe but also keep the queen safe but up the top of the base there looks like we're champions able to dive in a golem was able to give her some extra protection got past the defensive king up there and the balloons barely have any base to take out out for here i mean they got the headhunters under the eternal tome able to take out the defensive world champion 
We do have the Clan Castle troops there. They're going to go down to the Queen up the top of the base there. And all he has left is the Monarch and the RC steps through. And with the Spear Fox, she'll stay nice and safe right there. Pops that RC ability swag. He's got so much swag. Guys, he's got 10 balloons. He's got two freezes. He's got invisibility skeletons in haste. He's got so much overkill. And the only thing stopping Navi from getting to a fourth perfect war in a row in the Fire Clash League is Klaus, so we'll see what we can do here with the final attack. But in the meantime, Louis J gonna try to give a lifeline for his team and see if he can get one more triple. Push his team up to 14 stars. And if the rumor mill is working the way that I think it is, then Klaus is gonna have something wild for us. And if he makes a mistake and Louis J is able to pull off a triple here, then maybe we can still see this war swing. So let's see what we can do here as we charge this queen. Looks like she's fun to go towards the town hall. We got the wall break over there. The queen just needs to round around there, but she's gonna reach over the walls here and she goes to the battle builder first, bomb tower second. Oh, kind of a weird, okay. Ah, that invisibility tower. Okay, queen walking off to the left here. He's gonna have to find a way to get her back on track. Or maybe just adapt. He's get a wall break and get the queen to transition over to the scatter shot. But a second wall break needs to get... Okay. I don't know if I like that wall break position right there. It opened up the sweeper right there, but it did not give the queen a clean transition to the scatter shot compartment. But she can actually reach the town hall from that little opening right there. So she'll engage the clan castle. She's engaging headhunters, but she goes to ability. Not ideal right there, but the king with the giant gauntlet will make his way towards the town hall. The town hall... Not protected by an invisibility tower right now, so he does have a chance. He does get the king to go ahead and pop his ability. Clears the grass skelly, steps his way into town hall. He should get it, but the queen goes down. Heal is transferred to the king. He does take the tall down. All right, rewriters. Let's see if rewriters are as broken as we have suggested in the past as they charge in with no queen. No healers, just the warden with the raid gem and the royal champion. And he's got a lot of base to clear here, but he needs to get the monolith down relatively quickly. He's got the diggy. Diggy steps in, takes the stun of the monolith, quickly takes it down, marches his way forward. Now moving into the eagle artillery strike there. There's the ward ability. He's moving the, the heaviest part of the base right now, but we have all these defensive heroes in the backside. It's going to be trouble here. He's got the skeleton spell. He drops it now onto the multi-inferno there. Trying to lock up the heroes. We do not want the Royal Champion to get targeted. If she gets targeted by the defensive heroes, then this one is going to die out very, very quickly because her firepower is critically important. We got a battle drill that was in the mix there. Battle drill dropping out some super hogs up top there, but they immediately get dumped into a, a scatter shot there. But they do get inside them in a range of it, but they... Ah, they're still working on it. They're still working on it. Give him a chance there. RC got targeted. RC went down. But did she do enough damage there before she dropped? Scattershot stays standing. Ward is still working. He's got one more Root Rider. And maybe, maybe this Warden can finish off the base here and give him a chance here. But the time is ticking away, guys. And I don't think that he has a chance here to finish in time, even if he has the four. So that means that Navi is going for the perfect and if they get it they'll win this war by two stars so now without further ado let's dive into klaus are you guys ready for this i'm very very excited to see what klaus has for us today so let's dive in the man the myth the legend klaus is live with 40 valkyries 320 cap space of pure valkyries and I guess if he has more inside of that flame flicker, that'd be even more crazy. I think a lot of people like to run Valkyries inside of a flame flicker, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. But let's see what we can do here as he starts it with that flame flicker at the very top of the base there. Valkyrie will go in front of it and go ahead and provide some tanking and also a little bit of trap searching as well. But the lightning be able to take out the Inferno and the Expo right by that Eagle Artillery. But with the flame figure making its way in, he's got a couple more Valkyries dropping in. We got Tessa's popping into the area there, but he's got the traps already drawn out there. And the Valkyries are tanking the multi mortar right there. They do step inside of the range of the multi mortar, but more Valkyries in the area distract the next shots there. Flame figure locks on, and here we go over to the left side of the base here. 40 Valkyries gonna start to make their way forward. Klaus is going to risk this war with a pure Valkyrie army and cross this entire base and end on the town hall. Klaus, you're an absolute madman. 
But he will get the Eagle Artillery down. Here comes the Clan Castle pull here. Just a couple Valkyries just dropping in to support the heroes. More Valkyries dropping in behind the heroes as well. Just going to go ahead and reinforce right there. Not investing too many in any given spot there, but just spreading them out a little bit there. More Valkyries in at the very bottom of the base there. We'll go ahead and tank for the World Champion. The King of the Giant Gauntlet will... Go ahead and surge his way forward with the giant gauntlet, the rage gem, and that golem skin. That king gets absolutely enormous. The jump is going to carry the heroes over the town hall. Down south, he's got skeleton spells, Valkyries, and World Champion to cut out the pathing. And up top there, more Valkyries out of the flame flinger. He is swarming the backside of the base here. Skeleton spells down. Going to go ahead and lock out that monolith. He's got the ricochet cannon under control. More Valkyries up there. Queen takes the town hall down. RC assist, and oh my god, that's a lot of overkill right there. That was how many Valkyries? That was 46 Valkyries for Klaus. What an absolute madman. And that, my friends, is another win here for Navi in the Fire Clash League and another perfect war guys these guys are wild if you guys are new hit the like button subscribe to the channel and thanks again to uh time of the clash for helping us out to make sure we didn't miss this war while we were traveling out of new york and we got the recording so it was definitely worth it definitely glad we jumped to this but guys we'll see you in the next video